Okay, we're going to take a look at number 15 in section 3.1. Uh, this is to calculate the difference quotient for the function f of x equals 6x to the negative 2 uh, at a equal negative 1. So first, just note and make sure you understand what does it mean to have a negative exponent? Well, 6 times x to the negative 2 power is the same as 6 times 1 divided by x to the positive 2 power, right? Negative exponent meaning reciprocal, all right? So 1 over x squared. Well, 6 times 1 over x squared is just 6 divided by x squared. So this is this is really our function. I'm going to use that form, all right? So the difference quotient, first of all, uh, this is the what they ask us to, to find right here. This is the difference quotient. And so um, we need f of negative 1. What's f of negative 1? Well, if I plug in negative 1 into x, I get this. 6 divided by negative 1 squared is 6 divided by 1 is just 6. And then I also need f of negative 1 plus h. Well, notice f of negative 1 plus h. I just replace x with negative 1 plus h, right? Just plugging that in. So it's 6 divided by the quantity negative 1 plus h all squared. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not going to expand that out right now. So be careful. You can't just square the negative 1 and square the h and add them together, right? This would be negative 1 plus h times negative 1 plus h. You could foil that out. But let's leave that factored right now. It's in a good, in a good form, okay? So let's evaluate the difference quotient. So f of negative 1 plus h uh, is this whole thing. I'm just going to rewrite it there. f of negative 1 is 6, so, so minus f of negative 1 minus 6 all over h. Okay, so th this is the, the answer. There's the difference quotient, but they want it to be simplified. They want you to write it in fraction form, simplified fraction form. Notice we've got a fraction, small fraction here, within the bigger fraction. We want to simplify that out. And I showed you a couple of ways to do that. I'm going to use the technique that I said I usually use, which is to multiply both the numerator and the denominator of the, our, our big fraction by the least common denominator of all our smaller fractions. And the only denominator we have for the smaller fractions is negative 1 plus h quantity squared. So I'm literally going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same amount. Notice that the quantity I'm multiplying by is 1. So I'm not changing the expression. It's very important. Okay. Uh, first do the bottom. What's h times this thing? Well, it's just literally h times this thing. Again, I'm not going to expand it out yet. Leave it, leave it alone for right now. In fact, I'm going to leave the bottom just like that. Up top now, what happens? Well, this thing, right, there's parentheses around here. I'm going to distribute that over both of these two terms. Now, when I multiply this times this first fraction, notice in the denominator, I have negative 1 plus h quantity squared. And the numerator, I have negative 1 plus h quantity squared. So those cancel, right? That becomes 1 times 6. It just leaves me 6. In fact, that's the whole point of multiplying by that quantity. So I get rid of this fraction, this smaller fraction. Of course, 6, then I multiply this negative 1 plus h squared times 6. Well, that's 6 times negative 1 plus h quantity squared, right? Just multiply those two together. And don't forget, I've got this subtraction going on here, so be careful. Now, what I want to do is I want to see if I can simplify. Um, is there a common factor in the numerator and denominator that I can divide numerator and denominator by? Be careful. You can't cancel this negative 1 plus h squared with this negative 1 plus h squared because it's 6 here minus this whole thing. I'm dividing the whole denominator into both of these terms. So you can't do that. That would be incorrect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually now expand this numerator out and then combine like terms and see if I can then factor and find one of these two common factors. Okay. So first of all, what is negative 1 plus h quantity squared? Well, remember that's negative 1 plus h times negative 1 plus h. So First outer, inner, last, right? The first, negative 1 times negative 1, positive 1. The outer is negative h. The inner is negative h. And the last, h times h is h squared. So combine our like terms, we get 1 minus 2h plus h squared. So I'm literally going to replace this negative 1 plus h quantity squared with this. Okay. And now I'm going to distribute. Be careful here. This is net you know, plus a negative 6. Minus 6 is plus a negative 6. So I'm distributing the negative 6 through these two, three terms here. So I've got 6. Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6 down here. Negative 6 times negative 2h, positive 12h. 
negative 6 times positive h squared, negative 6h squared. So that's the numerator now after I distribute it. At the bottom, I leave alone. Do not, do not foil that out. Leave it factored. It's factored. Leave it alone. The top, I can simplify. 6 minus 6 is 0. I'm just left with 12h minus 6h squared. Now notice there is a common factor, uh, least common factor for, uh, or greatest common factor rather for 12h minus 6h squared is 6h. Right, pulling a 6h out of 12h leaves 2, 6h out of that leaves h. And now I can divide top and bottom now by this h because it's a factor. I could not divide top and bottom here because this is, this is not a factor of the numerator. But h is now a factor of the numerator. Okay, So your final answer is 6 times the quantity 2 minus h over this negative 1 plus h squared. Now you could pull that out if you want to, but I would just leave it alone. There's, it doesn't do you any good. Okay. Now you could also distribute the 6 through and get 12 minus 6h over this, or notice 12 minus 6h is the same as negative 6h plus 12. Any of these three forms will be fine. I think the one I saw that they were looking for was this, but I, I hope they'll accept any of these three. I would for sure. Okay. So that's the difference quotient. Now they wanted you to do a few other things with this. They wanted you to calculate the derivative uh, of the function, right, f prime at negative 1 by finding this, this limit right here, which is just the limit as h goes to 0 of our difference quotient, right? That's the, that's the limit definition of the derivative at a point, okay? Well, this whole expression, we just spent all this time working on, right? There it is. And what's it equal to? Any of these three things here. I'm going to use this middle one. It doesn't matter. You can you can try any of the three and see you get the same thing. And now we just take the limit as h goes to zero of this. Well, literally, there's no problem. I can use direct substitution. This function is continuous at h equals zero. So I can literally plug in up here 12 minus 6 times zero. That's just 12. Plug in zero here, I get negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. Quantity squared is positive 1. 12 divided by 1 gives me 12. So there's my derivative. The derivative at 1, negative 1 rather, is 12. The last thing they, they ask for then is what is the equation of the line uh, that's uh, the tangent line to the function f at a equal negative 1? Well, two things we need for the equation of a line. We need a point. Of course, it's at a equal negative 1. So what's negative 1 comma f of negative 1? Remember, we plugged in negative 1 up here, and we got an output of 6, right? So we know the point is negative 1 comma 6. And what's the slope? Well, that's what we found down here when we found f prime of negative 1. That's the slope, which was 12. Okay, so I have my point. I'll call that x1, y1. Slope m is 12. There's my point slope form of the equation of a line. I plug in y1 is 6, m is 12, x1 is negative 1. Be careful here. x minus a negative 1 is actually x plus 1. Distribute the 12 through there, and then add the 6 to both sides. And there is the equation of our tangent line. OK, so several steps in this problem. Hopefully, this is making sense. Um, if not, please let me know.